Hey you, yeah you who clicked on this video, thanks for giving our channel a shot. And if you will, please do us the honor of watching the video all the way through. Appreciate it. Now onto the video. So we need to talk about this Xbox showcase. So let's get into it. So this showcase was real interesting in the fact that uh, the lead up to this had a lot of hype. Now, I'm contrasting this with what happened at the uh, PlayStation showcase, uh, and there's a, a large difference here. So the PlayStation showcase, yeah, it had a lot of hype around it, but a lot of the hype was coming from Sony fans. Uh, they had a lot of expectations in their mind. They had a lot of things that they wanted to see, and that really manifested in how they reacted to what was actually shown. Whereas Xbox, in response to what seemed like a mediocre to lukewarm response uh, from the PlayStation fandom, had a lot to say about what they were and weren't going to do in their particular showcase. And one of the things that they had talked about specifically was the idea that they were not going to have CGI trailers, but more so focus on gameplay. And if you believed that, I have some Swampland to sell you. So how did Microsoft go about uh, either making good on this claim or at least attempting to? Well, they started out the entire showcase with, you guessed it, a CGI fucking trailer of uh, Playground Games remake, or not even remake, just a uh, reimagining of the Halo franchise. So this is really interesting uh, because Xbox, as we all know, dissolved Lionhead long ago. Uh, they were the originators of the Fable franchise. And now Playground Games is uh, taking up the franchise. So uh, this looked like CGI. It, that's, that's what it was. It was, a, it was a cinematic. There was little to I don't really think there was really any actual gameplay from this game we have no idea when it's coming out it is very much in alpha uh, so that was number one um, then we got uh, compulsion studios uh, game called uh, what is this juicent I, I don't I don't know uh, it looked like a double a AA project it, it was not triple a uh, there was a lot of gameplay in it though I will give it that I will give it that of course this is a day one game pass deal like every Microsoft game that will be coming out uh, from time and memoriam anything that is first party from them will be day one on game pass and those developers better hope that there's enough game pass to go around or that people you know buy the game because other than that that you know whatever they get from the game pass whatever check Microsoft rights that's all you getting but I digress <clears throat> my problems with game pass aside because I actually do have game pass even though I try to purchase most of my games uh, this is the only way I'm gonna play Microsoft games because I'm just not buying an Xbox I'm, I'm just, I don't see the value but uh, then we have still wakes deep um, and that had I guess gameplay in it uh, it also didn't really look particularly triple-a but that's also uh, a first-party game uh, 2024 release date which is going to be a theme in this particular showcase very little uh, is coming out this year very very little uh, then we have a uh, what is this dungeons of Hinterberg um, also looks very double-a uh, you know similar to like a like a lot of the games they've put out, like a, like a Hi-Fi Rush, things like that. Also 2024. Um, then we got a third party Cyberpunk uh, announcement. We finally know when Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty is coming out. I'm really hyped for that. I love Cyberpunk. That's uh, going to obviously be uh, multi-platform. It'll be on PlayStation. It'll be on PC. You know, no big deal. That comes out on September 26th. So that's going to be awesome. Then we had a lot of gameplay out of a game that very few people are going to actually buy. Well, nobody really buys games on Xbox. They're all uh, Game Pass. But um, I doubt that there's going to be a lot of people checking this out aside from the PC crowd. And that is City Skylines 2. Uh, that's going to be October 24th. So that's one for this year. Uh, then we got another third party game uh, in particular because they have a partnership with Atlas. Uh, we have Metaphor de Fantasio, uh, which we know is... Um, they're not going to have any exclusivity whatsoever. That'll more than likely be day and date with PlayStation uh, because they want their game to sell. Uh, so that's going to be 2024 as well. Then we get Towerborn. Uh, it's a co-op action game. Looks pretty fun. Uh, that's 2024. 
in exile uh, had a mostly cg trailer uh which basically looks like uh another bioshock time travel clone uh that's going to be called clockwork revolution i mean it looked cool but um it, it, if you told me that that was a expansion to bioshock infinite i will believe you like straight up I, I just believe you because that's really what it looks like uh then we got phil spencer talking about a whole bunch of games that they did not show trailers for including uh south of midnight and uh, avowed which i thought was very interesting that a lot of the games so the way that they get over not showing a, an abundance of cg trailers is by just not showing trailers at all for a lot of these games i th found that very interesting you got no forza uh trailer uh you it was just you got no hellblade 2 trailer like it was very interesting the way that they did this and the whole point of this i think not only is to cut down on the cg trailers and try to keep it more gameplay focused but also because oh my god the starfield uh showcase portion was long as all hell i mean oh my god i was able to get up use the bathroom oh jesus all for a game and this isn't a shit on starfield because the whole reason i even have game pass make no mistake was to play redfall and starfield obviously i took the l on redfall but uh it was, i was really looking forward to starfield but this lasted so damn long i mean it starts out with todd howard talking about the the entire affair which is cool uh but oh god this lasted entirely too long like if you wanted me to get hyped for the game, that's fine. But this game at the beginning of this, uh, I guess what you could call a featurette, uh, starts out with this game basically looking like No Man's Sky Gen 1 at first. Then uh, you get uh, some, you know, they start to introduce you to more things, uh, more mechanics in the game, uh, more systems in the game. So things I did like, things I didn't like. So what I did like about Starfield, uh, especially from what was shown today, was uh, A, I really liked uh, how expensive the worlds were, even though they were talking that nonsense about thousand, you know, 1,000 worlds, like I said, giving off major No Man's Sky Gen 1 vibes. Um, also, I really liked uh, the way the combat looked, um, even though it was very, very derivative, especially considering that Microsoft owns Obsidian. Uh, they're going to make a Outer Worlds uh, sequel, and yet this looked like Outer Worlds minus the comedy. Uh, I really like, but the combat looked cool. I love the fact that it does uh, support third person and first person gameplay. Really, really cool on that point. The, the ship to ship combat looked amazing. I am not going to front. That's probably going to be where I spend most of my time. Uh, so I really enjoyed that. The, the moment to moment gameplay looked really, uh, pretty good. And uh, also the customization of the weapons and the ships looked awesome. So those are the things that I liked. Here's the things that I am concerned about. So number one, uh, there is, I don't see really any story to speak of, or at least they didn't talk about any real story. They keep specifying and really hitting on the idea that there's going to be freedom, but is there a core story for me to latch onto? In an RPG, if I don't have a core story, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm going to lose focus, I'm going to lose interest, and I'm going to drop that motherfucker. Like, that's gonna happen. The moment-to-moment -moment gameplay can be as awesome as it wants to be, but I play RPGs to play a role in a larger story. Is that the case here or no? I'm sure there is one, but the fact that they're not highlighting it is of concern to me. The facial animations. The facial animations look like trash. Oh my God, what is going on here? Those facial animations look rough. I'm talking about grandma, bottom of grandma's feet rough. That's how rough these motherfuckers look. What is going on here? Uh, also, like I say, it it just the game looks very, very derivative. And we know it's gonna be 30 frames per second. They obviously didn't address anything about that, anything about the graphical fidelity, anything about the 30 frames per second. Uh, not go, getting 4K 60 uh, is a problem. We you know we can attribute that to the Series S. We already know what it is. Like, come on. Uh, so this was this was hard uh, for me. Like I say, I'm still looking forward to Starfield, but I would be lying if I said that my hype has diminished a tad bit, partially due to the extensive look at the game and the fact that it doesn't really seem to be doing a whole lot original with the exception of like some of the combat elements. So that's what I'm looking at. Also, Phil Spencer's dumbass announced a one terabyte version of the Series S. 
you know, the albatross, the anchor around the neck of the Xbox platform and what's really uh, stopping it from reaching the heights of 4K60 is that damn Series S. But hey, it's 349 and it comes out on September 1st. So, I mean, those are my thoughts on the showcase. Like I say, they didn't show a lot, uh, even though they had a lot to show. So that's really weird to me. Um, you let me know what you guys thought about this in the comments, whether or not you thought that, you know, you felt lied to, maybe even gaslit by the idea of there uh, not being CG trailers. And then the first damn thing they show is a damn CG trailer. Or you thought that this was, you know, a really good showcase. Uh, to me, I, I feel like this was slightly above Sony showcase, but not by very much. And Microsoft has nothing this year, like aside from Starfield. And I mean, Forza has its audience, but let's, it's not really like a system seller in that way. They don't really have a lot coming out this year. And that just showed from this showcase. But let me know what you guys thought about it in the uh, comment section below. We'll see you on the next one. A-Bit Heroes out. Peace. If you'd like to get a shout out on the channel, then hit that like button. Maybe share it with a couple of friends and do us the biggest honor of all. And subscribe to the channel so you can join the 8-Bit Heroes family. And while you're at it, hit that bell icon so you can be notified when our new videos come out.